Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1526. Hey, we're still talking about the amazing dynamic arrays and spilled arrays in the new Excel calculation engine in Office 365. And in this video, we want to follow up on creating cross tabulated reports, but see how to show the totals at the top and the left using an amazing array function called Mamult. Now, back in 1520, we saw how to create the dynamic cross tabulated report. And then in the community tab at Excel is fun discussions and survey about dynamic arrays. There's a bunch of comments about totals. And a few of the people said, hey, we want them at the top and the left. Here's our cross tabulated report. And if I change one of the variables, this is the row header input. So when I change it to region instantly, my row headers for the cross tabulated report change and also the totals. Now let's go over to the sheet 1526. And actually Bill Sizzes sent in this formula about using the mamult function. Now before we do the Bill Sizzes mamult function, it's probably just as easy to use a very similar formula to the one we use to calculate the totals in the cross tab because remember that formula is using two conditions, the variables from the spilled array at the column headers and then the row headers. So really, if I copy this and paste this up here, if we get rid of the part of the formula that's pointing to customer, which is criteria range 1, delete, delete, and then that reference to the spilled array using delete and delete that comma, now it's only looking up the product column and then summarizing by these. So when I hit Enter, there's my totals. Similarly over here, now I just want to get rid of the variables from the column headers. So I delete all the way to index, backspace, close parentheses. And for both column headers and row headers, we're simply using some ifs with one set of variables. If you know matrix algebra, then there is an alternative. Now, I have a great video on the mamult function. Mamult simply means matrix multiplication. Now, that's something we do in a matrix algebra class or maybe a straight algebra class. And it involves solving simultaneous equations in algebra. But in Excel, it can be useful to know how to use the mamult when we need to add totals for a column in an array or to add the row totals. And that's exactly what we need here. Now, in order to multiply two arrays, you actually first have to figure out what the rows and columns are for each. This is a 1 by 4, meaning one row by four columns. And this is four rows by five columns. And you can't do matrix multiplication unless the columns of the first are equal to the rows of the second. And the reason why is because this is what it does. It'll take this entire row times this column and then add the results. And then it goes on to the next column here, taking this row times this column. And it does that for each one of the columns in the second. Now, we only have one row in our first array, so it just cycles through once. But it multiplies each one of the elements. That's why there have to be four here and four here, and then adds them. And that's a great trick when you need to get totals from an array. Now, of course, that's the long way. You could, I suppose, do it with transpose. But the amazing thing about the mamult function is we just put this array and this array in the function, and it will automatically spill the answers for us. The only trick is how do we get this array of ones? Well, let's first see if we can get an array of ones. And what are we going to do? We're going to use the sequence function. This is a new array function. Now, we used to just take the columns of this and raise it to the 0 power. And that would give us an array of ones. But here we have the rows. We don't want to fill in rows. We want to fill in columns. So I'm going to comma. That just means that we'll have one row. All we need to do is figure out how many columns. And since the columns of this array have to be equal to the rows of the next, we simply use the rows function and count how many there are in that spilled array. Close parentheses, comma, the start is 1, comma, 0 for step. 
close parentheses. And when I control enter, we get a spill error. Oh, wait a second. I need to count not the row giving me one for each, but the rows. And so now it spills and we have our ones. That's the first array. And so we simply put it into mamult. There's array one, comma. And this is our interior array, close parentheses. So that formula, since F9, it delivers multiple answers, Control Z. When I hit Control Enter or Enter, it spills. And we get the correct totals. Over here, we use sequence. And here, we actually want rows. And we're counting the columns from the first set of spilled variables close parentheses, comma, because we'll have one column, comma, the start is 1, comma, 0 for step value, close parentheses, and Enter. Now, different than our first example, when we multiply these two arrays, this is the first array. So we actually have to take the first row times this column. And notice what that does. Five items times five items, and then added will give me the total for this row. And then it has to cycle through, since this is the first array, and do the next row times column, and then add, and so on, to get a total for each row. Now up here, F2, and I simply put this into Mamult. And in array 1, we put our crosstab numbers, comma. Sequence sits in array 2. Close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, it spills the correct results. So whether you do it with some ifs or mamult, there we get our totals to the left and above. It's awesome hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Bill Scissors for this solution. And if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including a couple more dynamic array videos. All right, we'll see you next video.